Leuven has always been perceived as a picturesque place with a cool tropical climate. What one often fails to know is that Doitong is also rich in heritage and culture. At the same time, it is also a living university who has successfully integrated a social enterprise model in helping the livelihood of the Doitong community. Good morning everyone, my name is Serling and today I have with me my colleagues Michelle, Siuming, Siuming and Alithia. We are excited to share with you on how Doitong can leverage and embrace its roots in its culture in building the garden of tomorrow. The development plan currently faces two pertinent issues in ensuring the economic sustainability of its tourism arm and as well as ensuring a successful transference of management responsibilities to its locals. At the end of our first master plan, we hope to have in place a sustainable model for the PEU and also to have a complete handover of the core business units to the local community through our strategy. Looking at its financial performance, TBU has been facing a decline in its revenue and is mainly attributed to the earnings from its entrance fee declining over the same period. And from what we have gathered, we see that earnings from entrance fees have always played a significant impact on generating revenue for Doi Tong's community. And thus, there's a, there's a need for us to place an importance on this as well. Also, we have also identified that Doi Tong has not fully perceived, portrayed its unique value proposition and conveyed it clearly to its target audience. Currently, Doi Tong has four key attractions and they can, uh, tourists can visit it as a package or individually. So one, so one aspect in which you can look to leverage on would be the rich heritage and culture whereby you can seek to provide more authentic and local experiences for this tourist attraction. At the same time, it can look into its element of social enterprise in sharing more on its successes in implementing the social enterprise and ensuring its sustainability in the Doiton community. Also, Doi Tong has not fully leveraged on its natural landscape and thus we will look to um, exploit, the, uh, exploit this landscape in order to provide exotic, uh, exotic alternatives for them such as bird watching and trekking. With reference to the second issue, there's a, lack in, there's a need to ensure smooth transference with, uh, with regards to the management responsibilities. Local employees lack the relevant skills in taking up these management roles simply because from what we've identified, the majority of them uh, come from actually restaurant, being restaurant staffs and as well as housekeeping uh, cleaners. This suggests to us that they lack the current skills in uh, taking up these management roles in running the business arms. Additionally, we see that there's no retention rate for high potential youths as these youths tend to uh, prefer to work at um, larger local Thai companies that tend to be situated outside of rural communities such as UCC. Introducing to you Doiton 2017, enriching the culture by reinforcing Doiton's UVP. At the same time, as a support, we ensure and empower the community in creating a sustainable management program. So diving deep into enriching the culture, we look at how we can reinforce the Doiton's unique value proposition and introduce new alternatives in order to enhance the Doiton experiences for this um, tourist, uh, tourist traveler. And so first, so first we look at what Doi Tong has to offer. And so we see that they are largely anchored as a unique social enterprise. Secondly, they have a rich heritage and firmly rooted culture and this is mainly attributed to the works and services of the royal family. And also they have strong cultural diversity because of uh, the different ethnic tribes that they have. Lastly, we see that they have beautiful scenery and environment and thus we seek to possibly leverage on this in order to draw in more attraction. Naturally, what this translates to Doi Tong is that Doi Tong can potentially attract government bodies who seek to replicate the successes of the social enterprise model. Se uh, secondly, educational tourists who simply want to understand and better learn of the local culture. And thirdly, the tourists who enjoy sightseeing and simply love the fun that nature can bring. So we first see that Doi Tong mainly leverages on their four main attractions. However, we note that these main attractions mainly operate in silo due to the overly passive strategies that, the, that they adopt. And thus, we look to infuse more local experiences through tapping on their 
potential and leveraging on their UDP. Thus, our team would like to push for in the repack repackaging attempt of these four isolated uh, core attractions by linking them up and not just linking them up and enhancing the tourist experience as they progress along a heritage trail which encompasses and improves the tourist experience in Doitong. And with that, we present to you the Doitong Heritage Trail. So, tourists can look to experience the authentic hill tracks by um, through the stopovers in uh, whereby the, through the stopovers um, between the four main attractions, whereby they can learn more about the culture and also be deeply immersed in the local in the local culture. So the second element that we wish to uh, promote would be the homestays, whereby the tourists will have the option of um, have pride, uh, of staying with Catholic villagers, and this will allow them to have a more local experience as well. Looking at the second aspect, we would like to introduce and promote the social enterprise spirit, which is currently very strong in the Doiton community. What this means is for us to partner and look into Doiton Cafe. A Deuton, this is the Deuton coffee, uh, Deuton's coffee plantation arm in producing local coffee and ensuring that uh, and giving a local taste to the Thais and as well as the tourists. What we would like to do would be to bring our tourists across to this plantation in understanding the production process and at the same time understanding how this contributes in giving back to the community of Deuton. And lastly, they can purchase the coffee products in bringing a local flavour back to their home country. So having better understood how the heritage trail can attract these tourists, we look at how we can um, price our, how we can promote our strategies in order to attract them better. So firstly, we look at partnerships with Thai universities who have interest in social enterprises. And what we will do is conduct field trips in Doitong for these schools, and this will help them to learn about the current processes um, at, through the heritage trail, and also learn firsthand from the locals about the real the real-life conditions and also the developments that they went through. Simultaneously, we would like to aggressively promote through our partner, Tita. Tita and, uh, and uh, Boitong has an alignment in terms of its values towards uh, eco-tourism, and we would like to push and uh, tap onto that extensive network of local green operators in helping increase our exposure to eco-tourism as an uh, aspect where we can develop. The next part of our strategy to reinforce the Doitong culture is to introduce new alternatives, which is to diversify and complement our existing activities. So, by doing so, we will first leverage on the untapped locations within Doitong. So, first of all, we'll take a look at the more foresty um, tribe occupied villages, such as the Sumpa village, which can be suitable for checking at scenic areas. <coughs> next, we can look at lakes, such as lakes near Doitong Creeks, which allows tourists to go by lake to go on the boats to ride on the lakes through canoes or motor boats. The forest parks are also ideal locations for bird watching and sightseeing. So, the introduction of these new activities can work with the following three factors. Firstly, with the local expertise of the tribes. So, these people actually have extensive experience with the landscape of Doitong and will be able to direct tourists through forest trekking paths and guide them in bird watching. And in terms of the unique value proposition that Doitong can bring, it will enable tourists to carry out activities that are uniquely joyful. Lastly, it's also environmentally sustainable as these nature-based activities will incorporate elements of ecotourism. So, the strengthening of our unique value proposition through this entire reinforced, reinforced strategy will be able to will allow us to work on the four key attractions and extend them through the visitings to the plantations as well as the homestays with the huge tribes. With the new activities offered, Tourists are able to select those that they have preference for and incorporate them into their existing itinerary, enhancing their long-term experience. And translating in this into numbers, we see a 3% revenue cable growth, which indicates that our strategy will be economically sustainable. So next, the next part of the Doitong 2017 framework will be in terms of empowering the community through developing a sustainable management program. So what we need to do is to ensure manpower sustainability through leveraging on local talents. So what the Doitong people actually did um, is that for general people, they actually need technical skills essential in the tourism industry and for educated youths, they want fast career advancement and work experience. So what TVU can do to meet their needs is to firstly establish an MA program that grooms local management that 
will be skilled and able to transfer these skills to the ground people. Also, a scholarship can be established to retain and attract the educated youth with the experience and career advancement that they are looking for. And all of these will help us to train a capable group of local management and incentivize the high potential youth in order to um, ensure social sustainability in the management of TVTVP. So, to do so, we will carry a partnership with the Tourism Authority of Thailand because of our congruent aims to advance community-based tourism. So, TAP can potentially offer the resources and industrial expertise that TVU is looking for and with the training of the HR staff, they are able to indirectly advance the Thai tourism industry and also the HR staff can offer their internship programs will be a boost for TAP. So next, moving on to the MA program, the first step will be to identify high potential workers who show leadership and uh, capability. Besides training and technical proficiency, there will also be in-house training by management which will enable them to understand the operations of TVU. And, and lastly, they are able to transfer their skills to the ground staff and also identify the next batch of um, MAs which ensures a sustainable cycle of local management de um, development. So in terms of the scholarship pro um, program, we will first select the scholarship recipients and they will experience internship experiences at TAT and will be bonded to a three-year bond in terms of employment. So by um, uh, giving them the opportunity to learn from the best, this scholarship also aims to bring them back to and ensure that they apply and the experience and knowledge they learn. So this will help us channel this fast-track managerial career progression for the scholars and we'll be able to attain an increase in middle management workers as seen from the graph here. So all in all, this shows the international timeline of our um, enriching our culture and empowering the community. And we believe that with these strategies, we'll be able to help Doi Tong build the, build the garden of, the, of tomorrow. Thank you. I'll start off with a first question. Uh, nice presentation. Um, I, I'm quite, quite interested in the, uh, the first recommendation that you all had uh, in regards to you know, coming up with a tourist package. Um, do you foresee that there will be a different package for local travelers versus foreign travelers? Do you have distinct packages available for them? Or, or do you think that just one generic package? Your question. So um, for our package, actually this is what we aim to promote, which is the entire package of the four main attractions, as well as um, the, uh, the field, trial, uh, field trial visits and also the social enterprise visits. However, we, we see that, um, we foresee that certain people might want to uh, experience this um, package, experience each of the individual attractions alone. So we actually have services that um, Provide to them, like uh, provide to them whereby we can um, cater these services individually. However, what we actually seek to promote is the entire package. Uh, firstly, because we feel that this way they can get the full experience of the local experience and also um, the look get to know more about the local culture. So okay, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Are, are you saying that um, do these tourists have the option to pick and choose where they want to go, or would that be like? pre-arranged programs for them to kind of select? We would like to, <clears throat> we would like to push for, for a package that has, that has been pre-planned for them, uh, specifically the, help, the, the help heritage trail and as well as the social enterprise uh, visit. What we, what we are offering as an option to them would be to customize should they need and want to, perhaps to have an additional tracking session or as well as a bird watch session. So they can definitely opt in for this additional add-ons or to switch uh, accordingly. Uh, it, is mere, it is merely on our part to plan accordingly in getting um, the relevant tour guides down to help uh, cater to the smaller, the smaller crowd in the op uh, sub uh, catered package. So are you going to focus on local? I mean, what's the emphasis? Local tourists versus foreign tourists? Which group will you emphasize? 
Thank you for your question. So basically, the key target group that our group has decided to focus on will be actually towards people who are interested in terms of learning more about the culture of Doi Tong, as well as having um, like more educational purposes towards learning about the social enterprise model. So actually, what our team has set out is to actually reach out to um, people within Thailand first, out of um, Doi Tong, and then eventually we'll slowly progress to reach out to international um, people. But eventually the motivation of the people will be the same, that there are people who wish to learn more about the social enterprise model, wish to know more about the culture, and also want to admire the beauty of Doi Tong as a landscape. So specifically, we have identified three different categories in terms of who you intend to target, as mentioned uh, by my, my teammate earlier. Specifically, governmental bodies, educational tourists, and tourists who enjoy sightseeing. So, uh, to answer your question, we are not segmenting them in terms of international tourists or domestic. We are looking into tourists who are uh, similar and aligned in terms of their interests. How do you plan to attract these uh, target or the target consumers to to the uh, to the location? What are your plans? So um, actually for governmental bodies, it has already been the case, so mainly, um, they, so mainly um, like country, developing countries like Myanmar, Afghanistan, they are, they are really starting to replicate the social enterprise model that uh, Doi Tong has in place, so we don't really look to target them, um, however we still, we still seek to provide the same kind of educational purposes that we can uh, give to them. And as for the edu educational tourists, it will be, um, firstly, we seek, so for educational tourists, the first target segment that we will first look at will be the students, um, as we believe that, as we believe that they will have a, a keen interest in um, learning about, learning about the social enterprise system and also about the culture, because mainly the students that we seek to target in the universities um, are the universities that have a vested interest in so social enterprises, and we see that, um, we see that these universities um, actually uh, are interested in funding these trips in order to let their students have a greater, greater exposure to um, learning about how they can develop their dis different dis uh, business plans for um, for the enterprise for their uh, different social enterprises. As for the travelers, we seek to target them through um, through the uh, Kita whereby they will be able to uh, uh, look at what we can promote and look at what we can offer them and um, uh, and pick and choose from them. Um, thank you for the presentation. You mentioned a very interesting idea about each of the I'd like to know what makes, uh, what, what are the characteristics of each of the regions that um, you have in mind with specific reference to Doi Tong? Um, what are the benefits of you know, being able to utilize this as compared to conventional methods? As well as, you know, is Doi Tong currently doing enough to qualify for uh, you know, have, uh, being an equal footing as such? Thank you for your question. Uh, I think, firstly, um, what the, some features of ecotourism would be actually um, having, firstly, um, nature reserves like forested areas that um, with that is um, one aspect where you have the asset and next we actually do um, preservation and actually conservation of these um, uh, um, of these um, nature reserves and also um, ecotourism would be to minimize the environmental impact you leave at the area so for example if you go on a um, trail or in, um, on a trekking trail then you would seek to not um, you seek to minimize um, tourist activities that will disturb the environment. For example, let's say um, there will not be any um, um, plucking of any um, fruits or any like activities that will disturb the nature reserve. So what specifically what Doiton has to offer for ecotourism is um, firstly its expense of um, and nature um, uh, like uh, nature features, uh, natural features like uh, forested areas, lakes, and forest parks, and all these form a good ecosystem of um, um, natural resources that um, Doiton can tap on and actually um, 
leverage it to promote eco tourism with the various activities that we are introducing. Uh, so, do you think that we have currently enough capabilities in food tourism in terms of, uh, you know, the tourist guides, people involved in the sort of in the entire process? Um, firstly, I think that we acknowledge that because it's an area that we haven't explored in previously, so definitely we will be um, we our um, knowledge of eco tourism will be inadequate. That is why we um for our um, social sustainability aspect of this ETDP, we also partner with um, we also seek to partner the Thailand Authority of Tourism to actually um, tap on the resources or expertise they have to offer because firstly um, the tourism board is actually looking to develop eco -tour sustainable tourism like eco tourism or community based tourism of Thailand and what we are actually offering is actually in line with that development so. We believe that they are able to, we will be able to tap on the resources they are able to provide and the training that they will seek to provide the local staff in ecotourism to actually launch this and fully leverage on what Bangkok has to offer for its nature and uh, for its natural scenery. Okay, so for the resources that you wish to tap on from the TDPT, mm -hmm. um, besides training for the local people, is there any other things that you could be thinking of? I think next would be actually. Um, standards or uh, standards to look out for in ecotourism because I believe that ecotourism is much more complex than simply just um, showcasing the natural features and actually there are many um, considerations to look out for like um, what actually makes ecotourism so um, environmentally sustainable and like in the um, so in that sense it will be like the standards and actually um, um, procedures like the standardized um, procedures in place to actually um, carry out eco tourism properly. How long does it take? Sorry, just just a follow up on my earlier question. How long does it take to train um, you know DPD people or the local community to develop this kind of tools? Um, so maybe you. Um, let you know about the timeline. So, in terms of the training, in terms of our um, social sustainability method, right? So basically, in terms of trying to train more people to be more um, equipped with the skills of being tour guides and getting more management skills rather than just technical skills, we're actually looking towards um, at the start of twenty fourteen to build up this program, and then we'll start identifying the staff, um, the staff to train in the middle of twenty fourteen, and from then on, the training will happen for about six months, and then after that there will be a succession of leadership. So this is just to ensure that there is a constant pipeline of tour guides, because I think existingly, actually Doikom has a certain number, just that the number might not be enough in future when it comes to an increase in demand. So this will be like how the pipeline will go on next time to ensure that there is suffic sufficient number of um, people who are equipped in the tourism industry to help meet the demand that is created with our increase in tourist attractions. So the initial phase will draw on resources of yeah, then then, subsequent, yeah, yeah. Because um how we planned it is that by twenty sixteen the the leadership will at least have a first round of management who is already ready to take over the D the D T um D P people. So these people will, will be the first batch to spearhead this and then subsequently after they eventually stop their support, they uh, we can still have a continuous cycle of building up these leaders. <coughs> So uh, I would like to raise a question because I think a lot of your plans um, will, will, will involve like the local population, uh, including like the homestays as well as looking at their way of life. So just a concern, maybe uh, some people may be concerned like their lifestyle will be actually disrupted due to these plans. So uh, what do you think is the value that these projects can bring to this local population and like what's the need for planning in your mind? Thank you for the question. Um, with reference to the slide, I think uh, one, of, one of the many aspects that we can bring in terms of the benefits to the local community is definitely jobs creation. Jobs creation in terms of the lower skilled labour, specifically tour guides or maybe trekking guides and bird watch, bird watch guides. Um, these are people who know the, know the landscape well and it's practically their, their, their home. So we would like to tap into their knowledge and expertise in terms of their understanding of the, the landscape 
and uh, create create businesses for them to help uh, maybe just uh, increase their life their their income source for the hill tribe and as well as at the same time sharing more about their hill tribe's local culture and um, their distinct their distinctiveness as well compared to different hill tribes. I'm just wondering. I mean, given that this is a tourism package, right? And you're going to get to local people more involved. Um, their ability to communicate is very important. Um, do you foresee any problems in terms of communication barriers between tribes people and the tourists who are coming to visit this 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 thing? Yeah. So basically, how we see is that because <laughs> um, the definitely acknowledge that there is likely to be a language barrier in terms of. Um, like having the English language and um, like people from, from coming from maybe like Singapore going there and then there might be a language barrier in terms of communicating in English. So what we foresee is that there's two ways to go about it. Firstly, engaging um, guides that might already know English to accompany um, like the tourists. And then the next part will be in terms of a more sustainable way because considering that Doitong is going into tourism, we need to ensure that actually the locals should actually try to attend like learning English to try to communicate better with the various tourists whose common language might be English. So we actually factored in certain um, training costs in terms of the English language, like going for classes, um, arranging for classes for them so that they can um, gradually master the language to facilitate the growth of the tourism industry as a whole. And they'll be, they'll be more equipped with the skills and be able to keep up with the um, globalization going around the um, um, area and all. So in several of the slides, you talked about Doi Tong's uh, unique value proposition. Um, how do you think Doi Tong is different from other surrounding areas that offer ecotourism? I mean, have you kind of researched the alternatives to ecotourism? Um, thank you for your question. So firstly, we have researched on a few um, other mountainous areas with hill tribes um, of what they actually have to offer. So firstly, um, and we realize that each mountain has its own unique value proposition and our value proposition does not clash and each one is distinct. So firstly for Doi Ankang, which is also in the um, Chiang Mai area, so um, horticulture is its like, really value proposition because um, as part of the royal project, this is the Royal Agricultural Station. So um, we actually see um, this um, for this uh, mountainous hill track, their value proposition would be horticulture and actually um, the um, agricultural aspect. Hence, we are not competing with them um, on this value proposition that they have to offer. And taking a look at another mountainous region with uh, hill tribes, um, there's nearby Lay Salon. So for this, um, it has because um, it's it has um, Yunnan roots, so it has a rich ethnic Chinese culture. And so this is the value proposition with different um, museums showcasing the Chinese history. And also, um, as well as for the um, uh, ecotourism side of Robi, um, they have tea plantations and it's known for their oolong um, plantations. So we believe that actually each one has distinct value proposition. And ours is um, for um, ours is um, um, it's really about the eco um, social enterprise and ecosystem as a living university where people can actually um, learn how this entire ecosystem actually um, operates. And so that is the value proposition of um, Doitong to educational tourists. Okay, I just need to push this a little bit further. Uh, given that you have so many external stakeholders that you wish to work with, right, the universities or the government agencies, can you, in one or two sentences, tell me what is the unique value proposition of your company? Just one or two sentences. Sell it to me. Definitely will be summarized into two key points. Its unique selling point of it uh, having an integrated social enterprise model inbuilt into the community, and as well as the rich heritage and culture it has to offer as, to, as a value add for the tourists. So, as stated the case, is there any initiative that you have to eliminate this environment based hill track? Uh, 
<coughs> so with regards to the seasonality issue, we, we, we have uh, factored that into account in, within our in-room discussion, and we actually uh, wrote, proposed to actually look into uh, liaising with partnerships with universities where they, are, they have a common interest in terms of uh, focusing on learning on the social enterprise model. So conducting regular excursions twice a semester, this will actually help in terms of the off-peak seasons in getting them to come over to Doitong and share with them on how this social enterprise is actually being uh, conducted in the, in the setting of Doitong's community. So why we believe that this will be uh, addressed, <coughs> addressing the seasonality issue is that we will intend to look into offering promotional discounts uh, at low, offering them, offering students at lower prices uh, in coming up and picking up these tourism packages, specifically looking into conducting field trips across the Doitong in learning the social enterprise model. So the product complement is why I believe that for these organized trips, it's easier to actually um, fix a date or fix a period. So um, we have more control in actually. Um, <coughs> Um, increasing demand in these off-peak seasons. Hence, like, by targeting this group of audience, we are actually um, able to better secure demand during the off-peak season. So, how many school trips are there? Um, three trips. Three trips. So, thank you for your question. So, basically, um, from our implementation, we have actually decided that at the start, because we are, it's just an initial rollout, so we actually um, then the progress of the, the entire um, program initially at the start of 2014. So when everything has been set into stone in terms of the details, we'll actually um, look into working with five universities first, and then after that, that, that will be in 2015, and also go out to five high tour agencies. So um, in 2016, we'll begin the um, rolling out of our entire um, heritage tour programs, and then after that, continuing on, we'll subsequently try to target um, to reach out to at least 10 Thai organizations per year. Yeah, so after that, um, we will actually look into reaching out to foreign universities as well as part of the plans, but we will start from Thailand first. For off season? Um, yeah, for off season. Uh, would that be sufficient to cover the program? Um, I think in terms of that, what I feel is that because within each university, there are actually a lot of groups of people who might be interested in terms of going um, for this sort of trip about learning about the social enterprise model and so as learning more about the culture and heritage. So within one extremely big university, like for example, um, Thermasak University, we believe that there can be several student groups going at the same time. And considering the fact that um, the, the number of tourist arrivals per month might actually not be <coughs> extremely substantial, so we believe that during a um, non-peak period, these different student groups, combining with the different tour agency groups, is able to supplement the um, seasonality issue of not, during non-peak periods. That it will at least make it better, rather than now when the demand actually fluctuates um, a lot. Okay, so you mentioned a lot of new initiatives and licensing and training. So uh, may I just see some of your key cost drivers of these initiatives and how you all foresee the revenue increases from entrance fees and stuff like that potentially talking about <coughs> Firstly, may I address the specifically the enriching the culture uh, recommendation? So within this recommendation, we've actually proposed multiple activities and we've actually broken down the revenue stream in terms of its activity, uh, respective activities. And what we believe will be the key revenue, uh, key driver to our revenue will be specifically the Hill Tribe Heritage Trail that we'd like to implement. Because what we believe is that these Hill Tribe Heritage Trails will be coming together with um, our core attractions, the four core attractions, in linking up to provide a holistic Doitong experience. Subsequently, what we believe is the second one will be the social enterprise, where we will look into, we are looking into uh, social enterprise field trips in getting them to understand this element of our community. Um, these will be the main two revenue drivers. With regards to the cost drivers, what we've actually managed to identify will be <coughs> the cost associated with the In terms of the total cost uh, for enriched and empowerment, which is referring to both of our recommendations, 
I did a cost breakdown and identified receptively in terms of the cost associated. But what we believe would be the main driver would be also in terms of the wages we're going to pay for our respective tour guides, bird watch, bird watch guides, um, trekking guides. So mainly um, these wages and as well as the increase in middle management wages, uh, specifically for empowerment, empowerment recommendation. We are promoting our low skilled labor to this middle management. So I hope that addresses your question in terms of revenue and cost. Cost here is twenty seven million, right? Yes. So you are going to grow your your revenue by twenty one million with the minimum cost. Are you saying so? Specifically, um. The recommendation of enriching would be the would be the revenue driver of our recommendation. So um, we take you through in terms of um, specifically the graph that I mentioned earlier, uh, shared earlier is breaking down in terms of activities. But what we uh, our activities is classified in terms of our strategies of rejuvenating and reinforcing. With regards to reinforcing, reinforcing will refer to our heritage trail as well as our social enterprise model. The second. Rejuvenate will be the introduction of additional modular add-ons in terms of activities, which refers to actually the kayaking, the boating, and as well as the uh, trekking element uh, as additional tourist-related activities that we can uh, introduce. Um, so, so for the entrance fee, you said uh, it is the entrance fees to the four mountains, is it? Is it? Specifically, the entrance fees will refer to entrance fees to the four core attractions. So, um, taking the example of Mai Fa, Mai Fa Luang Garden, so it's actually paying an upfront entrance fee before you actually enter the garden. So, uh, your strategy is focused a lot on social enterprises, and that's the main sort of attraction, UVP for both. Um, and, you know, not necessarily, you know, people who went for social enterprises may not necessarily want to go for uh, uh, nature sensing, um, which is what the entrance fee would offer. So, why do we project the growth in that, uh, despite the fact you're promoting? Very happily on social enterprises. What do you see there, sir? Um, I see that for the attractions, it's actually not about the, uh, not so much on nature sightseeing as they have rich cultural and um, historic like and, and history. For example, uh, like for the garden, it was actually the um the opium, um, uh, the opium plantations when it first started. Where it goes back to the roots of um how the tribe actually came about and carry out their livelihood. So we believe that the four extractions are actually not, um, they actually have rich heritage and cultural um, facts to offer to these educational tourists who are also interested in joining like the social enterprise and how like the Doiko um, community actually works and probably the, their history or actually their functioning. So we believe that these are actually essential to their learning of, social enter um, of the social enterprise itself and we believe that they would be keen on going on this attraction. Probably for these tourists, they would not be um, keen on the modular add-ons of the um, ecotourism aspects like the uh, trekking and, um, and um, so on. So we, um, so we offer them as add-ons and not um, compulsory in this, this package of selling, um, of promoting Doitem as, um, um, as a social enterprise learning model. Just, just to follow up on the earlier financial question, can you show me whether, you know, for each year, 2014 to 2017, what is the incremental surplus or deficit because of your recommendation? So taking a simple uh, revenue and costing, because I've actually done up the total cost and the total revenue, um, we actually project an uh, impact on net income as such. The reason why 2014 has a, such a high, high net income is actually because in terms of the, um, our recommendations have not been fully um, implemented, it's in terms of its like, stages, implemented by stages. Um, that's why the trend is as such. Is, is this incremental or is it total? Total. It's total. Yes. What about incremental? Like in 2014, what would be the incremental deficit? From what I understand, I think there is supposed to be a 
deficit, right? In 2014. Is there a deficit? Like your revenues was like 21 million, but your cost was 27 million. So is this incremental cost or total cost? This would refer to incremental cost. Incremental cost, yes. And then what's the incremental revenue? It's 21, right? For 2014. With 21 million, right? Yes, that's correct. So your first year, you're going to have a deficit of about six, six million, six million dollars. And second year, is it surplus or deficit? Go on. I mean, so you have two years of deficit already. Uh, 2015, your cost is incremental cost is 34, incremental revenue is what? 20, 20 something? Right, uh, sorry, 10, 10 million? I'd like to address the, the concern. What I did was, what I did in the, in the earlier slide. Sorry, in terms of projecting the revenue, I'm looking in terms of um, specifically in terms of entrance fees. So this is the forecasted revenue in, in, increase in terms of uh, rejuvenate and reinforce. But um, looking in terms of the costing, I've actually factored into account the management program cost as well, and as well as the... Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, that was the main reason why um, we experienced a deficit in, in terms of... Because actually in terms of projecting the revenue I looked into was actually only one of the business segment that um, we are mainly focusing on. But our costing is actually looking into other arms, which, which will uh, impact other arms. So in terms of projecting total revenue as a as a uh, as a Doricon community itself, actually, I did not take that into account. Okay, but do you see any additional revenues coming from these other costs that you're going to incur? I mean, what forms of other revenues would accrue? What mm -hmm. forms specifically um, that you're not considering? So, in breaking down our hotel, in breaking down our tourism business unit, we are looking in terms of many arms, respectively in terms of restaurants, um, restaurants, tour guides, and even sales. So, what I believe um, in terms of uh, the impact to revenue towards the other areas would be the growth of these areas, because um, with respect to the growing, the respect to the growing um, tourism packages that we are int uh, introducing and the influx in tourists. I would expect that the growth in terms of the, maybe the restaurant segment and as well as the sales segment would increase. So definitely, that will perhaps most likely be able to negate the effects of um, the increase in cost in terms of the wages. Okay. But you didn't have an overall... No, I did not. Finding. I did not do a projection. Okay. to um, get them back after graduation for a therapy year. <coughs> uh, do you think it's sustainable? Firstly, in terms of when they would leave after three years. And second of all, when TPPP goes out, uh, is there still sufficient funding to get the young people uh, scholarships and housing assistance? Thank you for your question. So, what we see now is that because we are basing it on the needs of the use of um, um, DTDP because they actually a lot of them wish to um, leave um, the place itself because of the lack of opportunities and um, the fact that maybe the job scopes here are not as interesting and they might not have as much career <coughs> progression. So what we thought of when we thought of this scholarship program was that with, it, with this they are given chances to go and um, go and um, do work attachments abroad with like industrial partners to learn about the best practices. So um, because of that, they will actually have a good knowledge and grasp of like 
um, business knowledges as well as the real life application and that's when they will come back to Doitong for three, three years. So we believe that um, because of the fast track um, that they are entitled to within this scholarship cycle, like after she, uh, so after they come back with their work attachment, they are actually enabled to go into the fast track management cycle. So they will be trained to become middle manager and then they will subsequently train their subordinates and then after that they can continue on to be promoted to senior manager or like even top management eventually. So we will say that the, their job scopes are constantly changing and their career progression is actually very clear and it's, it, it's actually very promising in terms of the things that they can experience like the work attachment and also learning from like um, best practices and also being able to lead a team. So these are the things that if at the start maybe D, DTDP did not was unable to provide the use and that led to them not wanting to remain here for the jobs but we believe that our scholarship program can help to mitigate um, this. Okay, we've got a second one to answer because um, I think right from the selection process of probably the scholarship recipients, we probably uh, want to um, ensure that these people have, um, uh, have passion for social enterprises. They believe in a cause of social enterprise where profits or let's say um, financial, um, like the, they are not very um, uh, concerned about like uh, financial, maximizing their financial returns. Like they have a passion for social enterprise, but probably they have a concern about like finances. Like I have little opportunities um, in the city of probably and such and probably better, like um, more varied, more experiences there. So why should I stay? Um, so I have a heart for social enterprise, but I also need to consider practically. So this kind of combines both way. Like practically, we give you um, the financial support to actually further your education firstly. And also next, we also give you the work experience that they want in the city or elsewhere. And then, um, and lastly, they actually are able to apply this all into a social enterprise and um, um, help them to uh, grow and develop a social enterprise of their own. So um, I think um, primarily it will be the identification of um, scholarship recipients in the first place that um, we have to identify that they have a passion for social enterprise and do continue to develop um, DTDP um, in order to ensure that um, the like to ensure that attrition rate is not that high. And regarding whether like we can continue funding the scholarships even after um, the foundation may pull out of the uh, project um, in the near future, we believe that. Um, with the success of our new initiatives for the tourism, we are able to generate um, sufficient revenue to actually um, cover and also taking a look at the number of scholarships you are giving, it's actually not a lot because um, we identify that these are really like the high potential people who are um, grooming them to be top management and we recognize that there can't be too many scholarships given. So. Um, we recognize um, the also the financial constraints, hence the limited number of scholarships given. So I, 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 I would like to ask, you know, just to follow up with what Brian said, uh, in terms of projections, how many scholarships do you intend to give? And how many do you intend to, or the targeted retention rate of these uh, scholars? So in terms of the scholarship intake, what we would see and uh, attempt to test out in the, the, the short run in terms of the five years projection would be to have a yearly intake of five because we acknowledge that these people are still in the, mid, in the midst of study and um, to, in order for them to realize their managerial roles and to actually contribute in terms of perhaps in generating revenue, uh, that will take a, a longer time frame in getting this return on investment. So uh, initially what we want to do is just to uh, you just kickstart this program and try and take it five a year. Five a year, and how long is the training? Uh, how long is the training? Uh, because um, we believe that um, for this, we identify individuals even before they start their undergraduate studies to find their money. Um, so there will be a lag time of three years, and um, actually four years because of the work experience of one year, before they can actually um, um, come back um, as um, employees and um, act as managers. So there will be a lag time of four years and the training would actually, um, the because middle management training will probably take a year since they are also fast tracked and then there will be pipeline and the top management roles. 
So you're saying that I'm taking five now, and it'll be about five years later before I can get them to be officially a full-time employee of, of this uh, digital tourism company, or something like that, this digital social enterprise company. Is that, is that what you're saying? Five months? Yes, that is, that, is, that is what it means. But what we believe in the short run would be to address the sustainability efforts uh, with respect to the current management level in terms of management skill sets, which we believe that the management program will be able to curb and negate the effects in the, in the short run in terms of managing and handing over to perhaps the low skilled labor and getting them to become middle management first. But in terms of taking in the long run, in terms of factoring into account the retention rate of youth, and we really want to tap on these expertise in terms of the youth, we are looking at that as a long term solution. But the management program is an immediate solution that we are trying to address. And as seen in the impact in terms of the high skilled labor to the low skilled labor proportion, this is what we foresee in terms of how low skilled labor currently can take over uh, for the, in the short run. So, what are you going to do with your, so your low skilled labor population will then transit into high skilled? Yes. You're saying that. So, what, what are these training programs going to be like? Because mainly in your presentation, you're talking about grooming new talent to enter the workforce. Yeah. So, so, how do you intend to? Yes, definitely. If uh, theoretically the calculations would be as such, but um, one key factor that I didn't take into account into in projecting these numbers would be definitely the retention rate, uh, attrition rate of these employees, because I would not expect all these five to actually transfer uh, year on year to stay in the in the long run. So um, the five is actually a number we would like to estimate with and expect. And definitely to groom and get get at least maybe one or two to stay in the long run. So attrition rate was not taken into account in this model. Okay. Then my third question is: by two thousand seventeen, your main force will be situated in the high skill sector. Do you yes. think this model fits with what you this composition, this ratio of about seven to five more high skill than low skill workers? Does it fit to your general plan of having it? I think um, logically thinking, this uh, definitely um, fitting fitting this number and proportion to our plan, uh, it may need some adjustments in terms of the numbers. As I see in my projections in terms of hiring additional low skilled labor, um, what we what I actually foresaw uh, foresee was actually uh, a yearly increase in 10, 15, 20 as such. But this is just a projection, and definitely we need to work alongside with the actual implementation of the recommendation. For example, implementing of the new tourist uh, attractions, coming up with bird watch hikes. Um, we have to definitely adjust in terms of the demands and the supply of this, um, uh, the, the labor and the operational manpower needed. And with, with these adjustments to the demand, um, the proportion will definitely change. And yes, it, it will need to change in adjusting to our master plan.
Okay, great. Thank you.